Hello and welcome to part 12 in this tutorial series on programming in C. In this tutorial series we're going to have another look at arrays and this time we're going to look at character arrays. I've got a main function here defined. Notice at the top I've included string.h library file because we'll need a function inside that. I've declared a single variable called letter and in single quotation marks because we're declaring one character. And then here I've declared an array of characters called word and inside double quotation marks because it's more than one character I'm storing inside there loaded and this is the way in C that when you want to store a sentence or anything more than one character the syntax to store it inside speech marks like this and as an array now the reason I haven't specified the size here is because for the compiler you don't need to specify the size in an array in this way when you've already declared what the array contains but there's another reason I haven't specified the size also because I want to show you a couple of things that are unique to character arrays. So if I now come to print our character array, array, excuse me, using the format specifier for a string, I'm also going to print the length of the string and I'm going to print the size in characters that the compiler allocated in our program for this word array. So the first one's fairly simple, I'm just printing word. For the length format specifier, I'm using strlen, open brackets, word, and strlen, string length, is a function from the string.h library which returns the number of characters in a string. And then for the third format specifier, I'm going to use something called size of and word, which will tell us how many characters space were allocated by the compiler for this array. So if I save this program and now run it, you'll see that loaded prints, the length is 6, but the size allocated is 7. And the reason for this is, is that in C, streams of characters, so strings that are together, are always terminated. So what that means is an extra character is added on to specify that the end of the string has been reached. And this is important because when functions like, say, printf receive an array of characters to print, they're not actually receiving how big the array is. So they're simply starting at character number one and printing all of the characters. So they, they print one character's worth of memory. They then move on and they print the next character and so on until they hit this null sentinel. And when they hit this null sentinel, they then stop printing characters. But until they hit this, hit this, they just carry on printing. And this becomes very important. So for example, if I now turn this into a two-dimensional array, containing loaded twice, now when you're specifying a two-dimensional array here, I need to tell the compiler for each of the for for each of the strings stored inside this array it'll be able to tell itself how many we have but it needs something to tell it how long they're going to be because of course when you know from multi-dimensional arrays whatever you specify here even if we end up with something a lot longer there might be a shorter word in there but it needs to know essentially how long the longest string is inside this array so I'm going to give this a size of 7 because we've seen here that we need a size of 7 because it will be applying this sentinel to the end of these two strings. So if I now go and print this and I'll call it word naught and word 1 we can have a look at what it says and says. Oh, I need to put a new line on the end of here, otherwise it's going to appear a bit of a mess. Let's compile and run again. Okay, so we've got word at position naught, which is the first word is loaded length 6 size 7, and word at position 1 is loaded length 6 size 7. All well and good. But what if we don't give enough space and we actually give this 6 
so we tell it there is space for six characters, which leaves no space at all for the null sentinel to go on the end. Well, let's have a look what happens then. And I'll compile and run, and now you can see it's printing loaded, loaded, and then this a p and the at sign, and I assume after the at sign, whatever is in the memory there is the same as a null sentinel, and it stopped printing. If we then look at word one, the next one in the array, we can see it prints loaded and exactly the same character sequence as above. So what's actually happened is printf has taken the first load of characters, or first array of characters in this string, and has printed them. Now these will be arranged in the memory one after the other, but because there was no room to put a null sentinel on the end of this loaded, it simply carried on to the next one and kept going. And it's actually kept going past the end of this one, because again there was no null sentinel telling it to stop. It's printed this A, uh, I don't know what that is, it looks a bit like a P, an up arrow, the at sign, and then presumably it's hit something which is the same value as what a null sentinel is and stopped printing. Sorry, here. And then with word 1, this time it started at the second loaded and printed also from the memory exactly the same set of characters. So when you're decla declaring in your program characters or strings to be used of characters or words, you need to make sure that you allocate, in, if you allocate the space in this way, that you allocate enough space for the null termination character, the null sentinel, to be put on the end. Otherwise you're going to end up with interesting and horrible bugs inside your program. Okay, that's it for this tutorial, and that's it for arrays as well. I hope that was clear. In the, I did say I think that we were in the next tutorial going to move on finally to looking at functions and then pointers. But I've decided to change things around a bit. We're actually, first of all, in the next tutorial going to start making a very simple application, but a hangman game. And then in the following tutorial we'll start pointers, and then we'll go on to functions. I hope that made some sense. Thanks very much for listening. Comments, criticisms welcome as always on YouTube.